Guess what? I've done it again. What another tent. Nine of those, three of those. I think the poles are all in one, or as one section, I hope. And the tent itself, single skin, hybrid. So straightforward. Should say second time around on this because I ordered one years ago and it never got beyond customs in London. So I'm really late to the party on this. But on paper, having done a wee bit of research, I still think this is probably one of the best options for the summer for me. So this is removing the hang tags and the like. Uh, what's that? 1.1 kilos. I'm just going to weigh the mat in its own right with its stuff sack. Uh, what's that? About 160 grams. Um, but I'll probably not use it. I'll end up using a foil blanket. <laughs> So I'm impressed by the way the whole pole is just one piece, just hubbed in the middle and then you just break it down and reassemble it as one thing, which is good. It also has orange tips which I guess must match the matte on the orange and grey at this end. I can't remember, I think one end is actually bigger and sits higher than the other, but we'll soon find out. So, schoolboy error there, basically orange to orange tip and grey to grey tip. Makes total sense. This is also colour coded, so grey at one end and orange at the other. Although to me it looks like the same shape all the way across, so don't know why. So despite the fact that it's basically a rectangle and it looks to me like you can sleep either way, there is a lower foot end and a higher framed head end, I guess, nearest the door. And then I think this actually, this crossbow has to be swiveled and sits over the top of the, under, the pole underneath the arch. So I'll go for that for the moment and I'll check the instructions later. Okay, that's good. And then it's got the wee twist clips. You kind of pop them on and then turn it. Although I find it slightly confusing, but I don't know if that's better. Right. The prop vents on the top here are already open for some reason. They haven't been closed at assembly. So. Uh, these pegs are quite nice. I like the fact they've got pullers on them for getting them in and out. They're just like uh, mini groundhogs, MSR style. I guess this will go somewhere right here. So, final corner. That seems quite taut. I'll just tighten up this one. Push that peg in a bit more. Like so, that's good. And just finish the rear as well. The rear vestibule by the look of it. And there you go. And that's the basics. Two prop vents at the top for a bit of through ventilation. Which will hopefully help because it is a single skin with just a hybrid mesh wall. I really like the exoskeleton. That's quick, which means you can pitch it as one. The only thing that remains now is just to get the three guy lines on. One at the small end and two coming off the poles here. So there's these tiny wee retainer clips that are built into the pole system. And you just tie off your Dyneema guys to them. Nice and thin. And just a usual generic plastic runners on them. So once you've done this, you won't have to do it again, but I guess it saves a bit of time on assembly, keeps the cost down. 
I'm not quite sure what angle you're meant to have these at, but I'll just run it at a 45 degree angle to the ridge pole. Not there's any wind. Then the last one at the back. A bit short for room here, so I'll just put it a bit tighter. There we go. Seems to pull it out, certainly. Right, simple so far. Let's get magnetic clips on the door. That's quite nice. Nice little touch. And a secondary one. We hear it tap into place. Yeah, quite like that, that's good. So the obvious thing you would do when you open that door is to probably roll it to the centre point. But for whatever reason, there is no elastic tie back or anything there. So I believe it actually goes all the way back to that corner, which is not brilliant for sitting inside it. A wee bit of a foible. Don't know why they couldn't just add a wee bit of elastic here. So I've taken the door right round the back here and there's a little clip, plastic clip. So you can attach it to the webbing at the bottom of the foot here, but that's fine as long as you're outside the tent, but a bit daft if you're inside it. It's good that the door doesn't hang in the dirt or fall down like a rainbow door. It ties back up to this side here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It looks to be a wee toggle and tie back, which I'll try. Pull and tighten. There you go. And there's just enough headroom. It must be about 90, 95 high. I'm not on a mat yet, so it's quite tight. And I'm right beside the head vent. Seems to be one little pocket by the head, which will just take your keys and a phone or whatever. Nothing else, really. There's no hanging lines or anything like that inside, though there is a wee lantern loop just here. So I'm good to use that for the basics. And this is obviously version two. In version one, this vent, you could put, bring the prop vent through a hole, an eyelet, and then attach it to close it down. But I think what happened is in winds, it would never stay up and it would just force its way in. So this is version two, uh, where the prop vent is only controllable from the outside. And there's also an extra flap to stop rain, rain driven, sorry, wind driven rain from coming in through the vent. Although you could sleep either way, there definitely is a head end. This is a lot higher nearest the door side. So it's not so much in your face and probably a wee bit better for condensation control. Whereas your foot end is that wee bit lower. It's probably about a foot and a half, two foot high. You could probably still sleep there okay. You'd be fine. Your head wouldn't touch. But I think condensation would be quite bad on this end. And opposite the door side, you've got a wee hatch here. Just with a zip that will give you enough room probably just to get boots in. You might be able to feed a small pack in. But you could always do that from the outside. But that'll certainly get all your muddy gear, wet gear out of the way. So I guess if you didn't want to clip the door all the way back over there, you could probably just put it on a loop here. Something like that. Okay, it's hanging a wee bit, but it'll be fine. Kind of, it zips down to the one side of it, like MSR tents, which I quite like. Easier to get to rather than stretching out into the vestibule. And I see that's actually quite good as well. It's got a two-way zip, so you can actually vent it a bit more. There is just enough room to cook. Let me bring you round. Um, I wouldn't want much gear in the way though, just your food and your stove and then I'd really use the back of the tent for all the other gear that you want out of the way. Quality of construction seems very good, it's up there with 3FUL gear. Some nature hikes that I've had have been a wee bit iffy here and there, particularly the zips actually, I'm not that keen on. However, this one actually looks pretty well made. The taping seems quite consistent, the stitching seems alright, there's not many loose ends if any. Uh, yeah, it's quite a tidy little design. As I say, I'm very late to the party. The very first one I got, got stuck in customs years ago and uh, was returned. So I never got to use the Vic one until now. And I know there's a million videos out there, but hopefully I can add something to it for you. Whether that's intentional or not, that's quite good. To take the stress off the zip in high winds, you can just use that little plastic clip and put it around one of the webbing areas on the feet. And that should stop zip strain and zip creep and high winds. So your prop vent just comes off there and you just secure it on there, another bit of velcro on top, press that down and your vent is much more closed if it gets a wee bit too wet or windy. And you can see the extra rain flap there so as rain gets driven up it gets stopped by that wall effectively and stops it getting into the mesh and dripping down inside. So we'll put a standard size Neo Air X light up just to see how it is and uh, I should actually mention 
rather than me blowing it up with my sweaty breath, I'll use this Flextail mini pump. This was given to me by Flextail to try. It's both a pump, a vacuum pump and a light as well, which is quite good. And it's actually of a decent size and weight. It's genuinely something I'd probably keep in my pack because it's light enough and compact enough. Being a bit of a gram counter, this is not bad at all. As you see from years of blowing my pad up with my breath, you can see almost like a mould. In fact, it will be a mould inside. The only good side about that is, I would say, is that it's quietened down over the years. It's not the crinkly, crisp bag it once was. Well, it's certainly a lot easier than blowing it up with your lungs. That's for sure. So there's enough shoulder width. It's not particularly long as a tent. You should have enough foot and head height and there certainly seems to be enough shoulder width. So it's quite a generous little one man inner. I'm now sitting in the Femores in the area. And yeah, actually there's still a couple of inches head height. So that's perfectly good, perfectly usable space. You can cook away in here, can sit up, have a drink, chill out. All good. Right, let's see what it's like lying down. That's pretty good. So the bag of my sleeping bag foot, even though it has got a waterproof part on it, I don't think it should be too much of an issue. Tons of headroom here actually, the mat's much further up. But yeah, that's fine. And again, for condensation, just having a bit more space here is a better option, I think. And then the throughput of breeze through the, the mesh on either side should help. One thing I have spotted, which is a wee bit annoying, is that on the Flextail pump, it doesn't actually come with a hook, it's a loop. And as luck would have it, the tent is a loop. So what do you do there then? <laughs> so I like things that are dual purpose. So this has the light on it. Press and hold, there you go. First light, middle intensity and high intensity. And just to show you one other feature it's got is if you've got your walking poles with you and a couple of extra guy lines, you can raise up a canopy for cooking or as a sunshade. So I left it up last night. It rained pretty constantly during the night. Mild weather, but fairly damp and wet and absolutely just checking. No leaks, which is great. So the, the, the tape seems seem to have done their job. The fabric seems okay. Just a tiny little skim of condensation, just evaporation I think from the grass. So there you go, that's my first impressions of the Nature Hike Vic 1. 1.1 kilos, about 100 pounds. I have to say, I do like it on first impressions. It just gives a perfect combination of room. Love the exoskeleton for wet weather, for just pitching the thing without getting the inner wet. And it seems very stable. Uh, with the three guy lines, it's, the frame itself seems pretty rock solid. So anything that will get thrown at me during the summer for uh, milder conditions and less demanding conditions, I think it'll be absolutely spot on. So we'll give this a go. I could have gone down the walking pole route and I've got the rab tent, which I can do with that as well. If I use just the outer, it's 690 grams. But what I like about this is I can throw this in a kayak, I can throw this on a bike. And I don't have to worry about walking poles because not all my trips are hill walking. So yeah, I'm very impressed with it. I got it from Collins Outdoors, thanks to James there. If you're interested, I'll put a discounted link in the um, description below and you can have a look at the tent yourself and see what you think. Maybe not the best colour in the world. I do believe you can get some of them in green. So it's not the, the most stealth colour, but I do actually like it. I think it's just nice, light and airy and adds to the feeling of room inside it. So thank you for watching. Uh, sorry about the cold, and I'll see you out there as soon as I recover, and we'll give this a wee fuel test. Cheers just now.